Hello everyone and welcome to our discussion on the treatment of cash flows. Uh, in this uh, particular example, our revision question one, we are going to look at uh, a complex question where you're going to be given various cash flows and you'll be required to evaluate the project using any of the uh, techniques any of the project appraisal techniques that we have discussed in the previous lectures so this is a very special edition of capital budgeting and I would say it is a more advanced uh, area on capital budgeting so I hope you are in position to have a copy of the question you can download the question from our uh, account and then of course you will need the calculator and the pen paper where you're going to uh, give a summary of our discussion okay so basically uh, this question goes through the treatment of uh, project cash flows if you have very many cash flows given to you if the question gives you uh, various cash flows and you are required to evaluate the project so here we are going to demonstrate the different things you need to consider uh, if you need to evaluate the project under any uh, project appraisal method given the various project cash flows uh, that are given in the question so of course uh, my assumption is that you have the question you have the calculator you have where to write and definitely you have gone through the question line by line so when we are looking at questions like this which are very complex the very first step that we make uh, the very first step that we make is to, to, to determine the initial outlay to determine the initial outlay and that's going to be the initial investment so as i've mentioned the very first step that you're going to make step number one is to determine uh, of course um, we shall look at the different methods later but definitely uh, the first thing that of course they have given us two methods so i'll begin with the net present value method okay uh, using the net present value method NPV and of course as you've mentioned from the discussion we've had we have said that a project is accepted under the net present value if it has a positive NPV or if its NPV is greater than is greater than zero so step number one is to determine the initial outlay determine the initial outlay now initial outlay uh, of course here we are saying that is going to be the initial expenditure mm. initial outlay uh, we are saying uh, this shall include the initial expenditure include the initial expenditure or initial investment incurred by uh, initial investment incurred okay now in our case in the case of MUL Mwambu Uganda Limited the initial investment uh, has been given as has been given as what how much has been given as 500 million of course if you have read the question you see that the initial investment uh, is given as uh, if we look at our question here if you look at our question here uh, they are saying that the initial investment 
I'm just looking for it. In additional information to the project to require an initial outlay of 500 billion. Okay, so the initial investment comes to 500 billion billion. So, um, of course, you'll note that the initial, this initial outlay is incurred in year zero, is incurred uh, in year zero of the project before, before it's uh, uh, before it is fully operational before it is fully operational so that is the very first step now we have identified the initial investment as uh, 500 billion however usually this initial investment may include other things when you read uh, when you come to our page this is this is the unit we are discussing treatment of cash flows in cap capital budgeting when you look at um, this discussion we are talking about uh, three types of cash flows the initial cash flow or initial outlay the intermediate cash flows and the terminal cash flows and we are saying that the initial cash flows these include the expenditure incurred before assets or projects are fully operational they are incurred in year zero and those costs include uh, the cost of the asset the invoice value capitalized expenditure opportunity costs investment allowance or tax holidays changes in working capital so in a fully fledged question where, where you're given uh, numerous items for initial uh, initial investment or initial outlay you will include the cost of the asset okay here then you add capital expenditure here we are looking at things like transport installation insurance and so on you bring it here then you bring in legal fees which are the incremental costs you bring them there then there is increase in working capital we shall see this and opportunity costs you include them there uh decrease or release working capital again this one we shall treat it separately though i brought it here in the discussion then the, some investment allowances will also be included these are usually uh, releases or savings so at the end of the day what we get down here is what we call the initial outlay okay that would be the initial outlay so for our case the initial outlay has come out as 500 million then next the other second type of the cash flow are the intermediate cash flows okay the intermediate cash flows so uh, we are saying that these are cash flows that an investor expects to generate over the project is life after the initial outlay has been made they include increase in sales revenue cost savings adjustment of depreciation and tax shield um, of course I demonstrate how this one is done for our particular question so for our particular question these would ideally be the intermediate cash flows the ones happening between year one and year number what year number five because our project is going to run for five for five years so how do we treat all these um, intermediate cash flows how are they treated so i'm going to take you back to our working here okay so step number two determine the intermediate intermediate cash flows so of course what you have noted is that um, what you have noted is that these are cash flows these are cash flows that an investor expects generate over the project is 
over the project is live after the initial outlay uh, has been made and of course we are saying that in most cases one may need to convert profit flows into cash into cash flows as shown in the table below as shown in the table below for the case of Mambu for the case of uh, MUL for the case of MUL so we shall include our our table here because remember these cash flows are going to run from year one to year number what to year number five not so so I'll need uh, a six a six by I think a six by six can do so I'm going to have my years included here I can have my year number five uh, shillings are in billions shillings are going to be in billions shillings in billions I can have it here shillings are in are you able to see my screen? Yes. Then we have year number four. We have our year number four there. Again, shillings are in billions. Then we have our year number three. We have our year number three. Uh, shillings are uh, in billions again. Then we have our year number two. Shillings are in billions. Then we have our year number one. Shillings are uh, in billions. So I can just tie up my table here. Here we shall include the items and of course I'm going to be picking all these from the table given in the exam question. In this case you have to begin with profit after tax, this one here. Keep on picking the figures, the profit after tax because we are going to convert the profit flows into cash flows. So we shall pick up those figures, I can just take you back. This is going to be profit uh, after tax. Profit after tax. Uh, profit after tax. We have thirty-eight point five. Year number one. We have one hundred nine. Year number two. This is one hundred forty. We have ninety-four point five. Ninety-four point five. And then we have our 90, our 98. So I'm picking all those figures just from this question here. 38.5, 119, 140, 94.5, and 98 right there. Then I proceed to adjust these uh, profit flows. First of all, by adding back interest, I add back the interest. I'm going to give the reason why. Add back uh, interest. Note one. Note number one. You're going to read my note there. Now the interest from our question here. Uh, the interest expense. I have 35, 40, 55, 60, 70 for year one to year five. 
respectively. So I'm going to bring in those figures, add them back to the profit after tax. So I bring the 35, I bring the 40, I bring the 55, I bring the 60, and then the 70. Now, why did I add back the interest? What could be the reason? Now, of course, I'm going to put my reason here, my not one. So interest payments, interest payments are not deducted, are not deducted in arriving at the relevant cash flows for the project since these are taken into account in the discount factor in the discount uh, rate or cost of capital Now, of course, you again find this explanation. You find this explanation in our notes. If you look at our notes here, we are giving reasons why uh, cash flows are treated the way we are treating them. So the reason why we add back interest payments is here. So we are saying that the interest payments cannot be deducted in arriving at the relevant cash flows for project investment appraisal purposes. Reason being that, <coughs> reason being that for us to appraise a project, we need to use a discount rate, and that discount rate is what uh, caters for the interest payments. So we don't go into uh, deduct, uh, de we don't go into interest payment deductions when we are arriving at the relevant cash flows. So in this case. Um, in this case, we have added back the interest payments. Now, next, after adjusting that, we add back, we add back the depreciation. We add back the depreciation. So, from our question, the depreciation charge. Um, if you look at our question here, the depreciation charge comes to yeah it's given in the note it's given in the note all right from our note number one you will see that we are saying administrative expenses include depreciation of five million uh include depreciation of five billion every year now we add back that depreciation and the reason is that for us to convert uh, the profit flows to cash flows, we add back all those non-cash items. So the formula ideally would be that a cash flow, a cash flow is equal to a profit flow plus non-cash items. And typical of this is depreciation. When the formula is here, the formula is here. Cash flow is equal to profit flow plus non-cash items like depreciation. So that's why we've added back the depreciation. So at the end of the day, we shall have what we call the project cash flows. Seventy-eight point five. Then year number two, the four. Uh huh. Year number three. Continue adding, giving me one hundred and seventy-three. All right. So those are our project cash flows, which I've called the intermediate what? The intermediate cash flows. So after getting the intermediate cash flows. You move to step number three. You move to step number three. And in step number three, 
we are going to determine the working capital requirement. This one will be done separately. Okay, in a different step. Alright, so I want you to go to our next video that starts from step number three. Uh, and from there, I'm going to give an explanation of how you move into the computation of the working capital requirement. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, if you need more of these worked out examples or you can simply purchase the full course.